Good morning. Chris Potter. Today's presentation. Sun simulators and frontal lenses. Let's begin, shall we? artificial sunlight. Figure one below shows an array of hexagonal reflectors used in the construction of sun simulators. This is actually a small scale sun simulator. And I think that NASA built and assembled a large scale one in space and they're using it to hide planets and stars in the solar system. Figure one. Hexagonal array of reflectors and a flat disk arrangement used in the construction of sun simulators. Figure 2 below shows the light source of a sun simulator. On the top left, we see a lamp in front of a reflector. On the top right, we see the side view of the lamp and the reflector. There is usually also a cooling system behind the reflector as the lamps generate a lot of heat. The lamps used are something like mercury xenon high pressure arc lamps. Several kinds of arc lamps that are used so as to provide the full spectrum of frequencies associated with sunlight. Not all lamps are switched on at the same time. They're selectively switched on to provide the correct intensity and spectral distribution so as to simulate sunlight as far as possible. The pulsating effect may be due to the selective switching system, switching different lamps on and off at regular intervals. So in figure two, the sun simulator light source arrangement is made up mainly of a high power lamp and a concave reflector behind it. So this is the hexagonal reflector, right? There's the lamp in the middle. The cooling mechanism, lamp, ah, a concave reflector. And then the light rays from the lamp are projected outwards. Bottom diagram in figure two shows how light rays coming off the lamp are all directed forward as the reflector reflects all the rays that are incident on it along a horizontal direction. Figure three shows the reflector array mounted on a flat disc and a convex mirror mounted above the center of the flat disc. This is the back part of the sun simulation device. And there's a flat disc in front of you. Lamp and reflector mounted on flat disc. Concave mirror in front of disc. Okay. So looking head on, it would be like this. Figure three light source array at the back of the sun simulator device is made up of hexagonal shaped concave reflectors mounted on a flat disc. A concave mirror is mounted above the center of the flat disc. Oh, okay. Interesting. Figure four shows the whole sun simulation device from the side. At the back, we have the flat disc with lamps. Okay, so that that little mirror, he is concave, not this guy, he's flat. It's a flat disc, duh, okay. I apologize for any confusion there. Maybe that was good for you to see that because some of these documents I've read over and over again and still have things to learn. So I repeat, excuse me, Figure four shows the whole sun simulation device from the side. So we'll see that here in a minute. At the back, we have the flat disc with lamps and reflectors mounted on it. In front of the flat disc and lamps, we have a concave mirror. And in front of that, we have a one large concave mirror followed by one large convex mirror. 
The large mirrors have holes through their center so that the light can pass through. At the front of the device, there is a small convex reflective surface. The orange arrows represent light rays coming off of the lamps and reflectors mounted on the flat disc at the back. The blue and green rays illustrates what happened to the light coming from the back disc. The blue ray demonstrates what happens to light departing from somewhere between the center and edge of the back disc. The green arrow illustrates what happens to a ray departing from the outer edge of the flat disc. Okay, so we'll look at that here in a minute. Now, convex mirrors, reflective surface curves outwards in the center. Cause incident rays to diverge in concave mirrors, reflective surface, the surface, excuse me, concave mirrors, the reflective surface curves inwards at the center. Causes incident rays to converge, to come together. So following the green ray, we see that it first hits the first large concave mirror which results in the ray converging after reflection towards the back flat disc, hitting the back small concave mirror. The ray is then reflected again at this mirror and converges a bit more, moving through the hole between the large concave and convex mirrors, and is then reflected off of the small convex reflecting surface at the front of the device. The ray then diverges towards the large convex mirror and diverges away from the large convex mirror. Finally, it goes through the frontal lens, which then bend the rays so that they exit the device in a parallel configuration. Figure four, sun simulation device viewed from the side. It's made of a light source back disc a large concave mirror, a large convex mirror, a small concave mirror, a small convex reflective surface, and lighthouse type frontal lenses. They're also in front of automobiles. They're automobile lenses. Very specific type of a lens that is created to direct high intense light, high intensity light. So I repeat, and excuse me for that, a small convex reflective surface and lighthouse type frontal lens at the front of the device. The blue and green rays illustrate the path followed by the light originating at different points on the back disc. So light rays coming from the lamp and reflectors, and the flat disc with lamp and ref reflector array. Here's the frontal lens in the front small convex reflective surface right here here's that large convex mirror large concave mirror small concave mirror Wow, that's an amazing design. The outline of the light leaving the sun simulator through the frontal lens is shown in figure five below on the right side. Now on the left of figure five, it shows that after light is diverging from the surface of the large convex mirror, light rays go through the frontal lens lenses and exit parallel to each other. Figure five, direction of light rays going through the front frontal lens after reflection from the front convex mirror and overall outline of the sun simulator as viewed from in front of it. Since these large mirrors are circular, we may expect the outline of the sun simulator to be circular, but we cannot forget that the light source or light sources are hexagonal in shape and that results and that actually results in the outline of the whole array of reflectors to be hexagonal in shape as well this was illustrated by figure one 
although an actual sun simulator device in orbit would be a great deal larger. This means the rays originate from an area on the back disk with a hexagonal outline and the final rays diverging from the convex mirror will retain that outline. It is therefore possible to see why lens flares reveal hexagonal shapes and circles with dots in the middle. They're mirror copy images of the light sources, circular lamps and hexagonal reflectors at the back of the device. There is still the problem of mounting those mirrors without disturbing the light. The best solution is probably to combine or confine the whole device in a huge cylindrical container. There will be brackets for the small reflective surface in the front that would get in the way and cast a bit of a shadow. The front circular reflective surface would also cause a shadow, possibly leading to a black circle viewed in the center of the simulated sun if the viewer is directly in line with it. Lastly, in order to make the device as bright as possible, it's a good idea to place converging lenses in front of the mirror assembly. The lens should then bend the diverging light rays reflected from the front convex mirror forward so that they exit the sun simulator parallel to each other. The large circular field pardon me, shield effect. We see in images of the sun from ISS and beams of light running through the center of the, sum, of the simulated sun seems to be due to lighthouse type frontal lenses mounted at the front of the device. To see that this is the case, notice how closely the simulated sun as seen in our sky shown in figure six with its two bright beams of light running across it resembles the flash of light from a lighthouse shown in figure seven. Figure six, sun simulator in the sky exhibiting the expected hexagonal shape and also the familiar light beams emanating from the center. The light flash from the lighthouse has a bright vertical beam of light running across its center. <clears throat> pardon me, and two other diagonal beams that are not nearly as bright. This light flash is produced with the lens shown on the right in figure seven. The bright vertical beam is produced with, is produced when a light ray is incident on the space between the central circular lens and the first semicircular prism above the central circular lens. When a ray is incident at that point, it's not bent, but it continues in a straight line. This is illustrated in figure eight. When a spherical frontal lens, as the one shown on the right of figure nine is used, at least two bright beams of light are produced. The two brightest beams are usually at 90 degrees to each other or 90 degrees angles, 90 degree angles to one another. Figure seven. So this is a frontal lens in a lighthouse. See how specifically designed that is? It's not like a light globe or <laughs> it's just a big circle, you know, a big sphere, excuse me. Well, it's a circular design. This is like some cool killer you know, high tech design that it's meant to make the light bright and focus it, etc. Okay, so figure seven, a light flash from a lighthouse with rotating frontal lenses. Oh yeah. So he's all the way around him. The frontal lens used by this lighthouse is shown on the right. Figure eight. Okay. When a light ray is incident at the point that's shown, it is not bent, but goes through in a straight line, creating a vertical beam of light. All right. Figure nine. Let me preface that by on the ISS feed. If you can capture this part of the feed, it's not that difficult. Well, 
they'll say that they're changing cameras or there's some kind of technical issue all technical issue all the time. So if you do isolate this type of imagery or video, um, you'll notice it just doesn't look like the sun and there's all kinds of hexagonal lens flares that are all kinds of weird colors. I don't know anything about physics, okay? But I can assure you, when the physicist first approached me and I showed a video of this particular type of phenomenon that's supposed to be the sun and space on the ISS feed, she told me flat out, there's no way any of us can believe that that's the sun. It looks like it's some kind of laser containment system for a sun simulator. And then it began. And then she started writing documents beyond all measure. She had already been writing documents for lectures, etc. Let me proceed. Figure nine. Sun simulator from the ISS has several beams of light running across the center. The vertical beam being the brightest and a circular ring around it. So it, it doesn't look right. See? Okay. And this ring. So from the ISS, period, the end, you can see there's some kind of device in space that's mimicking the sun. A sun simulator. It's on the ISS feed. It's Which is funny because I'm surprised that ISS hasn't been turned off. They were saying that they weren't going to do any of the space stuff. They were just going to focus on the space station. And the astronauts that are, you know, floating in space. Okay, I just had a thought. I have to share this right now. So I was reading the scriptures. Genesis. From the Bible. King James Version. It clearly says that the Lord God Almighty divided the waters from the firmament. that there was water above the firmament and below, and that the water below had land. So to me, the firmament is the sky, and then the water above is friggin' space. There's some kind of liquid in space, and I think NASA is hiding that from us. Let's proceed. Figure nine shows the sun simulator as viewed from the ISS some form of liquid. Notice, okay, let me try that again. I apologize for uh, kind of going off there, but I really had to mention that. Figure nine shows the sun simulator as viewed from the ISS. Notice that it has one main bright vertical beam of light running across its center, another beam not quite as bright running horizontally, and a few diagonal light beams. Notice also that the sun simulator is surrounded by a circular ring. It looks like a completely hokey device, is what she first said. Figure 9 shows the flash of light from a lighthouse using a spherical frontal lens at the type shown on the right. Notice that the flash of light has a ring around it similar to the sun simulator picture from the ISS. The beams of light emanating from the center are also visible, but are not as long as the main beam seen in figure 7. Probably because it was not very dark when the picture of the flash was taken. Figure 9, flash of light on the left from a lighthouse using the spherical frontal lens or lenses as shown on the right. A physicist's thoughts. Thanks again, Chris Potter. Bye now. Collector mounted on flat disc, concave mirror in front of disc. Okay. So looking head on, it would be like this, right? Figure three, light source array at the back of the sun simulator device is made up of hexagonal shaped concave reflectors mounted on a flat disc 
a concave mirror is mounted above the center of the flat disc. Oh, okay. Interesting. Good morning. Chris Potter. Today's presentation. Sun simulators and frontal lenses. Let's begin, shall we? Hope you're having a great day. Artificial sunlight. Figure one below shows an array of hexagonal reflectors used in the construction of sun simulators. This is actually a small scale sun simulator. And I think that NASA built and assembled a large scale one in space. And they're used to provide the full spectrum of frequencies associated with sunlight. Not all lamps are switched on at the same time. They're selectively switched on to provide the correct intensity and spectral distribution so as to simulate sunlight as far as possible. The pulsating effect may be due to the selective switching system, switching different lamps on and off at regular intervals. So in figure two, the sun simulator light source arrangement is made up mainly of a high power lamp and a concave reflector behind it. So this is the hexagonal reflector, right? There's the lamp in the middle. The cooling mechanism, using it to hide planets and stars in the solar system. Figure one, hexagonal array of reflectors in a flat disc arrangement used in the construction of sun simulators. Figure two below shows the light source of a sun simulator. On the top left, we see a lamp in front of a reflector. On the top right, we see the side view of the lamp and the reflector. There is usually also a cooling system behind the reflector as the lamps generate a lot of heat. The lamps used are something like mercury xenon high pressure arc lamps. Several kinds of arc lamps that are used so as lamp, ah, a concave reflector. And then the light rays from the lamp are projected outwards. Bottom diagram in figure two shows how light rays coming off the lamp are all directed forward as the reflector reflects all the rays that are incident on it along a horizontal direction. Figure three shows the reflector array mounted on a flat disc and a convex mirror mounted above the center of the flat disc. This is the back part of the sun simulation device. And there's a flat disc in front of you, lamp and reflector.